So now another man, not from Europe, but from the region, uh, let me introduce Rauf Dabbas, former advisor to the Prime Minister, and uh, now very much advocating for environment, who's going to present about gender and his project currently going on in the country. I will give you... All right, thank you. Uh, I'll give you a different perspective. Thank you. <clears throat> I brought this off of the web, off the, off the internet, uh, and uh, I thought it was a good background to start with. Uh, and the reason why is because I want to talk about the environment, and I want to talk about the importance of an environment from an uh, equitable gender perspective. And so this is a good image because in 1992, I remember back when I started my environmentalism, um, it was the Rio, Rio conference back in 1992. And at that time, they were talking about development and environment, right? It was development and environment. And there were two separate issues. And the people or the politicians mainly didn't want to go further than that. It took another 10 years. It was, it was uh, Rio plus 10, and I think it was in Johannesburg back then. And that's when the first term came out, if you remember, some of you. Uh, um, it was sustainable development, and that's when they first coined that term. All right, sustainable development. And then as environmentalists, we were left scrambling on how to translate that into something on the ground. And it just it, it missed them. It missed them totally. For the next 10 years, everyone came up with their own uh, concoction of how to proceed with something called uh, sustainable development. And then, in two th and then, and then uh, Rio plus 20 years, it was, I think, at the, at the uh, Paris conference, if you remember, 2015 back then, it was uh, uh, the new terminology was coming about. It was called green economy or green growth. And that's where I want to start, right? So I've been in the environmental field all this time since 1992. And, and, and only until recently, is, is as an environmentalist, I can honestly say there's hope although many of the tipping points have been breached and, and there's almost no return on some of those fronts. And this is one of the examples I wanted to give. Look at the same mountain peaks, right? But back about, what, 30, 40 years ago, you had the ice uh, covering much of uh, the Antarctica and, and today it's, it's nothing. And so that's danger. We are going to be affected. We are currently being affected. Diseases and all type of wars, water wars or whatever, is going to be magnified. Whatever problems we had 30 years ago, they're going to be magnified only if it's to do with the environment. So we're going to have to be very vigilant about this. And I think that do nothing is no longer acceptable. We cannot go about doing our business as usual, thinking that, ah, oh, don't worry, someone else will take care of it. It will not. And we are being affected in Jordan as well. So that brings me to why I'm here today. I guess the thing that triggered uh, um, uh, uh, Marjan about why to bring me up stage here is basically because one of the projects I, uh, we, we started at the NGO, Friends of the Environment Society, is, is a project that we did with uh, uh, rural communities. It's uh, bringing illiterate grandmothers together and, and training them on how, grandmothers, on how to become solar engineers. And I was a skeptic at the beginning telling the Indian guy that came all the way from India, from Barefoot College, that, listen, Habibi, this doesn't work in Jordan. Don't try it. Adole, these people in the desert don't understand when you say, I want to speak with the women. It just, you know, I, I'm from a tribe, I understand this. Don't even try it. And he said, Habibi, chill, just translate. And so I said, okay, I'll translate. And he began to speak with the males who were visiting, they were sitting in front of us, and the males just would go along, yes, we want this and we want that and we want And then finally, about a half hour passes by and he says, listen, tell them I don't want any male here, I want only the women. And I told him, uh, uh, no. He says, just do it. I, I did this in Burkina Faso and Afghanistan and God knows where, and it works. And I said, okay, let me try. So I told him, listen, no offense to you men, but he wants to speak with the women. Long story short, I can go on this for an hour, we only have 10 minutes. He got the women, and I was surprised. The women came in, sat down with them. Long story short, we sent off two women off to India. Six months later, they were back, and now today we have 20 women in the eastern desert, Karak, Tafile, and uh, Irbid, uh, sorry, Mafrag, all trained on how to assemble. So if you bring, there you go. These are the women that are assembling these parts from scratch. All we have to bring is the ICs and the adapters, these small little things. They wield them on to the, to the green board and they assemble a complete integrated solar photovoltaic cell that can be used 
for reading or, or their night uh, activities, whatever that might be. That's an example, right? Why is this example good? And this is probably brings me back to what Eric and, and, and what Isabel mentioned. I, I want to make sure that whenever you bring in something from another country, and I am sure you know about this, is you have to study what the current situation is in Jordan. And I can go on and say, well, it doesn't work. It does work to a certain extent, but you, there has to be some finesse in it as well. So what we did, I think, something we know at the beginning, we designed it not to be this way. We want to have projects for, for the female, keep them busy, which is important. But we also wanted something with the males. The males need to feel busy as well. But as you move further out of uh, metropolitan cities, the males become less and less interested, actually, in a family-oriented business and more of their own, it seems, uh, well-being. And if they have a little money in their, in their pockets, males tend to want to spend it on a new mobile, new car, if they can afford that, or get married. And, and that's the predominance of the males. As further you go, uh, and there probably needs to be studies around this, how far you need to go before they really just uh, can care less about the family and more about themselves. It, it, it's, um, it, it's, a, it's a phenomenon that I cannot understand until today, but the women are different. Women want to keep up with the family unit. They want to improve their structure, their, their, their roots, the family unit at the village. They want to stay in the village, and they want to um, uh, help make their economic situation better to improve their family units. So that's very good. But at the same time, if you don't do it with the males, something with them, it becomes a losing battle between both sexes, the male and the female, and it becomes counterproductive. So our next phase for this will be to also introduce the male uh, part of these villages to something related to an, uh, energy, but more, more in the terms of a solar cooking manufacturing plant, which will come about later on. My, my reason for bringing this out is because uh, the importance to find the balance between the two gender or the genders to have a gender equity whenever you're thinking about a project. And if you don't, even, even in some cases, the males aren't as productive as they might be uh, in comparison to the women, uh, but they need to also keep uh, busy and feel important. Otherwise, you have these problems that occur, and, and there has been many of those. We've overcome them, thank God, and now we have a production of the solar photovoltaic lanterns and, and uh, also the um, uh, stationary uh, solar photovoltaic energy coming to them. So uh, I want to also mention that uh, in Jordan, there's been a lot of developments. Some of them need to be highlighted, and, and many of them, in fact, all of these sectors that have been highlighted in Jordan uh, came about uh, from two studies that came out. It was the Green, scoping, the green uh, Economy Scoping Study in 2010, and another study, which was the Global Green Growth, or the Green Growth uh, Strategy and Action Plan, which was produced by the Green Growth Institute at the Ministry of Environment. Six sectors were identified. These six uh, sectors need to be, um, well, energy, water, waste, agriculture, transportation, and tourism. Those six, uh, six sectors, each of those sectors can have an, an amazing impact if we do it in an equitable fashion between both males and females. The example I give today is just one example where it has an, an energy perspective to it, but all the five other sectors can, can, can be equally beneficial and provide the symbiotic relationship, a win-win situation between the males and the females working in communities, especially the further you go out of, uh, of metropolitan cities, bringing about economic change that we need so badly in Jordan, a country like Jordan that's having high unemployment, very challenging economy. Uh, those, uh, those six sectors can, can bring about an amazing uh, uh, transformation. Uh, and I think uh, uh, green economy uh, provides a safe environment for an equitable and uh, a, 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 a safe uh, livelihood uh, for all communities. And, 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 and it's a great time to be alive. The new, uh, the new generation, the graduates can think about this out of the box, I think much easier than what the older generation like myself have a hard time struggle with because they're gonna be looking into things that have never been thought of before uh, in terms of uh, green economy and green growth, things that uh, are, are able to integrate very easily with both the female and the male um, 
uh, workforce. And I think one of the challenges we need to overcome is the local policies that pretty much until today, even in Jordan, which is a very democratic, or not very democratic, but certainly a, a democratic, uh, but there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, I guess, um, uh, challenges still uh, being played on the, on the women or female gender, specifically when it comes to policy or social or even economic uh, uh, gains in, in, in the kingdom. So there needs to be a lot more done when, it, when this happens and perhaps through the support of embassies such as the Swedish embassy, more uh, should be done in terms of uh, identifying those weak linkages where it comes to uh, um, the, the role that, that, that gender can play in order to um, move forward uh, the um, role of, of women in different sectors. It, it, there's a lot of room to have in a country like Jordan with, with huge dividends on, on everyone, uh, but there needs to be more stress given to many of these, especially uh, one example I can say, out of this small little teeny weeny project that we did in the Eastern Desert, <coughs> the women her name is Um Gumar. She was voted uh, to become the very first woman on the municipal council in their village. So r immediately, you notice, as the women are mobilized and, uh, and become more uh, in, uh, engaged with economic um, uh, activities, they immediately begin to think about how to improve their society, not only through their small unit uh, focus family, but also on their village um, level as well. And the example I give is this woman became a very successful member of the municipality um, after such a project was introduced into her village. So the, the amount of, of potential for women to take whatever gains they get and pass it on to the entire village would be a, a, a multiplying effect. So uh, I think uh, I will stop there, won't go on much more, and maybe you can have more questions to ask as we go forward. Thank you very much.